Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate correlation coefficients in R. Now let's take a look at some data that we're going to use in this video to try and understand uh, what we are doing with correlation coefficients. So I have a data file for this video, number 79, uh, it's a CSV file containing fictitious data. Uh, don't forget that this file and all sample data files plus R scripts used in this series of videos are available in my GitHub and you'll find a link to that in the information section on the YouTube page beneath this video. So let's read this um, data file in and display the results. And we can see this is fictitious data that I've made up for this video, and it contains uh, 10 records uh, showing sales figures, the number of products sold, and the revenue from those products in the last two columns. And I'd like to be able to measure, is there a correlation between the number of sales and the revenue from those sales? So I expect that there would be, but I want to see how strong that correlation is. So to, um, first of all, let me visualize this. So I'm gonna just do a quick scatter plot. Plot the uh, sales data dollar sign sales figure and the sales data dollar sign revenue figure. So just a quick plot here, Don't, I'm not putting any labels or anything on this. We can see if I expand this on the right hand side that it does look as if there is quite a strong relationship between the sales and the revenue from those. So we can see in general as sales increase so does the revenue. So we have a fairly strong positive relationship here. But we want to know how strong that, it, that relationship is by displaying a correlation coefficient r for uh, the strength of this relationship. So the way we calculate uh, the correlation coefficient in r is using the cor function, c-o-r, um, open and close brackets. And don't forget that in the help section, if you go to it and type in c-o-r, you will get information about the cor function. Um, parameters that you can use, examples and the arguments and so on within that. So if you haven't used it before, it's always worthwhile to go and take a look at the uh, information section. So in the correlation coefficient, again, I'm just going to put, <coughs> excuse me, my two variables. So let me copy these to save myself some typing. So copy these two variables, place them inside in the brackets. And I can now calculate the cor a correlation coefficient between sales and revenue. So let me run this. We can see that we have a very strong positive correlation here. There's no surprise there that as sales increase, so does revenue. Uh, but the uh, R, R coefficient value of 0.959 is very high and that indicates a very strong positive correlation. So we know that there's a strong relationship between these two variables. Now, the, de and the default uh, value in CAR is the Pearson correlation coefficient. The Pearson correlation coefficient is most often used uh, when your data are normally distributed and you are looking for a measure of the relationship between them. So I can also, if I want to uh, specify this, so let me just copy down that full line of code, copy and paste it in here. I can specify uh, which method of correlation that we can use because there are, uh, there are more than one. So I'm going to put in here the method parameter method equals, and in this case here, I'm just going to put in Pearson. So Pearson is the default correlation. So this particular calculation here um, is, is going to give me the same result if I run it. So in other words, I, I don't need to put in the actually state that the method is Pearson because that's the same as the default. You see, I'm getting exactly the same two values in the console. But it might be useful for you, particularly if you're mixing up correlation coefficients, to actually state the method. Now again, to save myself some typing, I want to copy this line. And there are two other correlation coefficients that you should be aware of. So if your data are not normal, so let me just paste this in. If your data are not normal, I cannot use the Pearson correlation coefficient. Or if you're using rank-based data, you shouldn't use the Pearson correlation coefficient unless, of course, you have lots of ties, then the Pearson correlation coefficient is the one to use. So the first of the human, let me delete that word there. I'm going to insert Kendall. Kendall, Kendall's TAF, T-A-U, pronounced TAF, uh, is a correlation coefficient used uh, as it's a rank-based correlation coefficient. So if I run this line of code here, you can see that I'm getting a slightly less strong correlation. But So be careful of the data types that you're using here. The Pearson correlation coefficient is the most suitable one for the data that I have here. But if you're using the, want to calculate the Kendall correlation coefficient, this is how you do it. And then there's one more left, that's the Spearman rank correlation coefficient. So I'm going to paste this in here and again replace the word Pearson with Spearman. 
Okay, and if I run this, you can see I'm getting a different value again, 0.93. So be very careful on the um, um, correlation coefficient that you choose that is most appropriate for your data. In my example here, the Pearson one is definitely the most appropriate one that we should use. But if you're dealing with non-normal data or rank-based data or categorical data of any type, then the Kendall or the Spearman correlation coefficient are useful for you. Note here also that uh, each of the names of the correlation coefficients is indicated with a small uh, leading letter. So don't use capital letters there. If you do, you get an error message and it's easy for you to change it back. So that's how you calculate correlation coefficients in R. Very, very straightforward. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.